Oh, it is it's locked. Working. <laughs> it's working. It's going. <laughs> I was like, I, nothing happened. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, I'm, I was out of frame. Welcome to another weekly Keto Chow Facebook Live. Um, I'm Chris. I'm Miriam. <laughs> We're your hosts. <laughs> and my job at the beginning of all of these is to share this to our page. Yes. So. So my job is to try to say something and not sound dumb. Yep. So, Chris and I and uh, two of our daughters did the 23andMe um, ancestry test, and we got them back, and they are pretty cool. Uh, we did find out that um, our two daughters that are twins are 100% DNA matched to each other. We did not know that they are identical. We assumed that they were, but we know for sure that they are, so that's cool. That's yep. That's kind of the reason why we had them do the test. Yeah, and which is now they're sad because they any differences are well, they're not genetic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to know. So the reason we didn't know, if you guys want to know the story, it was when um, we were pregnant. When I was pregnant with um, Audrey and Haley, the doctor found the heartbeats and the <laughs> ultrasounds and all this stuff, and we couldn't tell if the placenta was one or two that had fused together. And so he said, well, upon delivery, we should be able to tell because they could tell what blood type they were and they could tell that they were both girls, but they couldn't tell if the placenta was one. And if it's one placenta, then that means that they're twins and they're share or they're identical and they're sharing nutrients, but um, they couldn't usually. tell. Usually. Yes, usually. We know a lot about twins now. So anyway, <laughs> upon delivery, he looked at it and he's like, yeah, I can't tell. If they're 12 and they look the same, <laughs> then I'd say they're identical. Yeah. And at the time, 16 years ago, it was $1,000 to do a DNA test. And we didn't have enough money for that. <laughs> no. We were just grateful that we had them on the earth and <laughs> that we could pay their bills. And it took a long time to pay. Yep. But um, anyway, so... It's a hundred dollars for the twenty three me test. Yep. And not a thousand. So. Yep. Well and Carrie Brown had also told us to uh do it so that we could check for the MTHFR gene mutation. Mm -hmm. Um you can also see if you've got the APOE four. Oh. Which uh can well, that's the one that uh, Ivor Cummins has. Um and Hey Anthony. Hi Alice. Hi. Anyway, so it was, it was good to get those tests. I, we actually got them done, too. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what we can do with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, cool info. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we uh, just got a question on our previous Facebook Live, like today, our old one. Um, somebody wanted to know the shelf life of keto chow that's been mixed up with avocado oil. You want to do that one? Um, sure. It's okay. pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So since it's a milk protein, we still treat keto chow like milk. You're going to want to keep it in the fridge all the time. If you make it with avocado oil, it probably will last a little longer than heavy cream, but I still, mm. it's like six days, seven days, eight days max probably. It just depends on, yeah, how good your fridge cools and yeah, yeah just taste it if it tastes bad don't drink it but i would just six days is probably good and that's about the same as if you mix it with um heavy cream um alice is had a question about the skeleton <gasps> she did <laughs> she says it's creeping I'm so in the glad frame that she noticed <laughs> <laughs> that's our skeleton for the month his yep. name is mr skelly we're gonna try to have him in all our posts or at least a lot of our posts because yeah. i think he's hilarious Yep. So I'm glad you noticed him. He's saying hello. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, she, Miriam's planning on doing a bunch of Instagram posts featuring mm -hmm. Mr. Skelly. Yes, he's going to feature a bunch of products too. <laughs> yeah. Not just ours. Yeah. So also ours we, though. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. We have a drawer. I actually stole the idea from uh, Matt and Mega with Keto Connect. There's a drawer that's all of the keto treats that we have. A lot of them we get from like KetoCon or... You know, just places like that. A lot of them, Miriam just buys off Amazon or yes. off the websites. Or Nui Cookie. Oh. Yep. 
<laughs> we but, don't actually keep those in the keto drawer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Miriam keeps those for herself. But um, anyway, it's originally it was just a place to put them all together, but uh, our daughters who do keto use that yeah, to make lunches. It's nice because then they know what they can take for lunch. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. We also have the little uh, little containers of olives or yeah. pickles that you can get at the store in the little... The little fruit containers. Yeah, it looks but, like a fruit cup. But they're olives <laughs> and pickles in there and some pocket bacon from Pedersen Farms. Well, I call it pocket bacon. I don't know what they he call could, it. Uh, the guy called it pocket bacon, too. Oh. I don't know. It's like fully cooked uh, something bacon. Uh, you don't yeah. remember, but it, it's pocket bacon. But it's bacon. so delicious. Yeah. So. so, yeah, we have a drawer of keto, keto treats, treats slash snacks. Yep. But I'm trying not to eat snacks right now. This is my current goal. So, no snacks. That's right. I didn't even eat any of the Lily's um, sugar free s- salted caramel chocolate. Yeah, I didn't eat any today. Yeah. I, I almost got some when you had me get some oh, out of the thing. I, I saw it and I was like, maybe I'll get some of that when I come back. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing treats. No I'm treats. Not uh, doing snacks. Anyway, I think that's if I'm going to eat the, it, I eat it with dinner. I think that's part of the weight problem mm-hmm. is we're. Tr- trying to lose weight and we're just maintaining because we keep snagging between yeah. meals and I don't think it's very smart. It doesn't help that we bought like 30 pounds of st- um, cheese curds today. Yeah, well, that's okay. But that's for, you know, mostly for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> humorous. <laughs> that's right. That's so awesome. I said Skelly's going to be humorous. Okay, so... Okay, sorry. Back to... Back to our questions. Uh, somebody... Um, wanted to, and so we're putting together questions. If you have a question, um, go ahead and ask and we'll answer it right away. Um, but I just go through the keto chow Facebook support group. I go through the keto chow subreddit. I go through different questions that we get during the week and just kind of put them together. Um, uh, we had a lady, she's actually lives here in Utah, um, could not find heavy cream and wanted to know if she could use half and half. Now, the problem with half and half, and you, you can actually see the table I'm going to be talking about if you Google keto chow half and half. Um, so half and half is half cream, half milk. It's basically milk that has more cream in it, I guess you could say. Um, the problem is uh, they always express the serving size as like a tablespoon. And with half and half the amount of carbs in a tablespoon, well, they can usually round it down to zero, even though it doesn't have very many calories. So um, you want to, if you can, use heavy cream. If you happen to have a Costco that sells the Dairy Gold Classic 40, which is 40% fat, use that. Because typical heavy cream is 38%. Um, Whipping cream, yeah, 38% fat. fat. Yeah. Not just 38%. <laughs> 38% fat. And regular whipping cream is 35%. Light cream, which I didn't even know was a thing, is 20 and half and half is 12% fat. Um, in a serving, you're getting only 18 calories from uh, the half and half. But if you are using heavy cream, you're getting 51 um, somebody just asked, is there a difference between whipping cream, heavy whipping cream versus heavy cream? There is. Um, whipping, if it says whipping in it, that means it has some emulsifiers just to make it whip better to mm-hmm. get the air in there. Um, Which, if you can't find heavy cream, use heavy whipping cream. Yeah. In fact, it's going to be better yeah. than milk or whatever. Well, you, chances are you won't be able to find heavy cream you'll only be able to find heavy whipping cream yep. so um, we've used it before it works fine well we, the the stuff that we have in our fridge that's it's heavy whipping cream right now it is mm-hmm. yeah the dairy gold the dairy 40 gold 40 yeah um it just it has the emulsifiers in it because the only way that you can get heavy cream not whipping cream is it's to go to like dairy. yeah from a dairy and it doesn't it's like raw and you're going to get sick from it, but that's a different story. <laughs> People are like, no, raw milk is best. Yeah. I know, raw milk is the best. That's what everybody says. Until you get sick. Anyway. Have you got sick from raw milk? What? Have you got sick from raw milk? No, but I watched the Netflix documentary. About raw milk? 
Uh, it was a documentary called Rotten. They also did a thing about bees. It was really cool. Okay. Anyway, so heavy cream, you get 51 calories a serving. And for 400 calories, you're getting 3.22 grams of carbs. Half and half, if you do 400 calories using half and half, you're getting 15.78 so you don't want to use half and half. I mean, it's it's better than a lot of other things, I guess. But you would be very hard-pressed to be successful with a ketogenic diet if you were to use half and half in keto chow. It would actually be better to, to use just use water. It. Well, water or almond unsweetened milk. almond milk. With and, and, oil. Yeah, with oil. And the thing is... Um, with unsweetened almond milk, there are people who use unsweetened almond milk with keto chow without any real fat source. Mm -hmm. That's because they're doing usually a, a very special thing called a protein sparing modified fast or PSMF. It's where you have very, very low calories, mostly from protein with almost no fat. And so it spares the protein so you don't lose um, muscle mass, but it's almost like you're in a fasted state. Um, so you can do that, but I, yeah, I wouldn't recommend half and half. I, you can use um, almond milk if you want, unsweetened almond milk. But generally speaking, you're going to want to use heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, or avocado oil. Uh, which brings us to another question somebody had. Can you use olive oil? You can. We just don't because we don't like the way it tastes in keto <laughs> chow. <laughs> and for that matter, with all, with avocado oil, you want to make sure you're using the cold pressed. Um, if you want a more in-depth discussion about the difference between hot pressed, cold pressed, uh, Keto Connect has a really good video where they talk about oils, which oils to use, which ones are better, which ones are worse um, for cooking. The cold press means that they didn't use any heat, they didn't use any chemicals, they just took the stuff and squeezed it, and that was it. Um, and avocado oil and olive oil are both fruit oils. That's an important distinction. They're not a seed oil, also called a vegetable oil, but it's not vegetables. They're seeds. Um, we, our bodies are not naturally accustomed to having seed oils. They do work very good with, um, our bodies work very well with uh, fruit oils, which is olive oil and avocado oil and coconut oil, which is also a nut technically anyway there you go so you can use avocado i mean Coco olive oil Coconut. you can use olive oil it just has a really strong flavor typically and so for that reason we don't usually recommend it to people but you could i would not recommend um sunflower oil or canola oil or soybean oil or safflower oil or any of those other ones um, just because they cause a lot of reactive um, they, they, they cause a lot of damage to your cells. Um, they combine with oxygen and, yeah, oxidize. Um, okay, so <laughs> here we go. Does keto chow give anyone else loose stools? That was asked in our Facebook group. So when you start a ketogenic diet, um, typically you're going from a low-fat diet to a really high-fat diet. Um, whether it's keto or keto chow, or keto with keto chow, or keto without keto chow, you're adding a lot of oil to your diet, a lot of fat, and a lot of times your 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 body isn't up to the task, and so, so a good portion of that will just run on through and come out the other side. Having loose stools or diarrhea flat out when you're starting a ketogenic diet is is not uncommon. It's not uncommon at all. Oddly enough, there are a lot of people who go the exact opposite direction. Mm -hmm. um, I know quite a few people who have constipation and they have to add psyllium husk to their keto chow or else they have problems. So um, a lot of people, there were a couple of good recommendations in the Facebook support group. Um, you can do use a probiotic. That's usually what I do if I'm having any problems. Um, also switching from, if you're doing heavy cream, switching to avocado oil, mm -hmm will help people. A lot of times people don't know that they have a, a dairy intolerance. Um, the, the milk protein that's in keto chow usually doesn't cause people, even with lactose problems, um, any problem, issues at all. 
Um, and Alice says, and lots of water. Yes. Yes, drink lots of water. Um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Dang it. I lost my train of thought. Choo choo. <laughs> Let's see. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you switch to avocado oil. Yes. Instead of heavy cream, a lot of times that will solve any latent problems that you might have. Most people who have lactose intolerance don't have a problem with the, the small amount of lactose that's in keto chow by itself. A lot of people with lactose intolerance can even do heavy cream just fine. But if you're having any issues, try switching to avocado oil. Um, Anthony says that keto chow is actually really good with av- avocado oil. And that's it's, what I drank today. Yeah, and it's surprising. Um, when we do sampling of keto chow at uh, trade shows... shows. We'll usually have chocolate mixed with avocado oil because we always tell people you can do it with heavy cream or avocado oil and water. A lot of times people are like, just heavy cream? We're like, oh, sorry. Water and heavy cream or avocado oil. Anyway, so people will have avocado oil mixed with chocolate for people to try because a lot of times we tell people you can mix it with avocado oil and they're like. That's a lot of oil. That Well, that's a lot of oil Mm -hmm. and they expect that you know you're going to mix it up and there's going to be like a a layer of oil on the top just because you know oil and water don't mix well they do mix really well if you have a lot of acacia gum which we do in the in the mix and so you don't get an oil slick on top and so we have people try the avocado oil and they're like wow and it's so funny a lot of people love it and other people hate it and they love the the heavy cream. So we come Just back depends to depends on what you like, what's your preference, what yeah. your body works with. I I most of the time do half avocado oil, half heavy cream. Which usually comes out as half and half. And we're like, yeah. wait, I mean No no no, not no, half no, and half. Not half and half. Half avocado oil, half heavy cream. Yep. Seems to be a happy mix for me. So um Ruth just asked asked, um, I ordered chicken soup. What oil do you suggest with that? Butter salted <laughs> butter um, so good. the chicken soup just flat out could really use a, some, salt, some salt a little salt um, using salted butter with that actually does a really good job of getting the salt in there or you can add pepper or and you can add more salt you um, can add either or yeah all. but the nice thing about the savory chicken soup is um, because you're typically mixing it up hot with hot water um, or you're mixing it up and then heating it uh, you can use hard fats like butter, like coconut, coconut oil. oil. Like, I still need to do it. I haven't done it yet. Bacon, bacon grease. Fat, fat grease. <laughs> I still fat need to do bacon it. Bacon yeah. grease. So, um, I think Holly did it. Did Holly do it? I think so. Oh, well, she hasn't told me how it went. Anyway. I'm sure so, it was wonderful. Yeah, I'm sure it was. So uh, I do four ounces heavy whipping cream and one ounce MCT. There you go. One ounce of MCT is a lot. You sure you don't mean a tablespoon? I mean, you could do an ounce. I've done a lot of MCT oil, and it wasn't happy. Not that much, though. Yeah. So well, no, I was. Like this. I was doing. I was doing uh, two ounces of the MCT oil, the coconut oil, when I was doing that crazy experiment. But they're using heavy cream, also. Yeah, I know. So yeah, they might. That. Um, Miriam likes to do, a lot of times she'll do two ounces, well, she'll do 50 milliliters of, uh, yeah, tablespoon, there you go. Um, she'll do 50 milliliters of heavy cream and 25 milliliters of avocado oil, which is the equivalent of a hundred of heavy Heavy cream. cream. Yeah. So, because there's twice as many calories in the oil as there is in um, the whipping cream. Mm -hmm. So. And I stayed at 600 or 1600 calories. Today so, I did 50 milliliters of avocado oil. Oh, just oil. straight avocado just oil? Avocado. And you were doing chocolate, right? Peanut Oh, butter. chocolate peanut butter? That's right. Yeah. Oh, you did an, uh, an Instagram post about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, which brings us to the next question, which Jesse asked and someone else asked, um, how long do they last in the fridge? Six days. <laughs> yeah, up to six days. <laughs> You can you can tip, sometimes go longer than that. On Monday, I drank a keto chow I had made the previous Monday because I had put peanut butter into my vanilla, and I wanted to drink it. So, 
So it was good. fine. Yeah. But that's what we usually say, about six yep. days. And somebody else asked, do you prep an entire week at a time? Yes. You can. We do it all the time. Yeah. I mean, I'll typically mix up enough for about four days worth, which depending on whether or not my daughters are stealing mine or they are leaving it to me or we're today we got stuck somewhere and couldn't get back to drink our keto chow so we went to sizzler i got so, a lobster yep yeah, and I a got, steak it was delicious <laughs> the lady asked would you like any steak sauce and miriam said butter, butter. <laughs> <laughs> and the lady was like Butter's not steak sauce. <laughs> we used it as steak sauce. It was great. <laughs> it was so, so <laughs> um, and um, Anthony, by the way, uh, brought up something. He's using a pump. You can use like a, a hand pump, a, a, a lotion oh, pump. Oh, that's what we used to do. Um, and you can use that to measure out your oil. You uh, figure out how many pumps, squirts your pump requires to do it used that. Used to be what three. Yeah, and there's actually a page on our website that talks about that. Back in the day, we used to do that. Yep. Um, Alice wanted to know, what's your favorite keto snack? My boyfriend is asking. Let's see. My favorite keto snack. Like Stoka bars a lot. Yeah, Stoka bars are really good. Um, F-bombs are really good. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would have to favorite. say... What's that? Favorite keto snack. Bacon. <sighs> <laughs> yeah i actually i think my favorite of all time even if you go back to my childhood mm -hmm. is to throw some cheese on a plate melt it and eat it with a fork cream cheese on celery yeah that's good too you you tend to like the the newy the keto cookies i like yeah. newy cookies those are good so i like <clears throat> newy cookies dipped in keto chow <laughs> That's well. It, when we were testing out, we got um, the cookies. And, it was the cookies Wait, and cream. Are you sure? Yeah, okay. I'm positive it was the cookies Whatever. and cream. It and Miriam so had just got a box of Nui, and uh, <laughs> it was the um, extra crispy. Yeah, the extra crispy chips. ones. I think they messed up, and they're like, "We'll sell these as extra crispy." And Miriam bought a bunch, but uh, it's because they're delicious. Yeah, she was dipping it in. It was pretty funny. Peanut butter with vanilla. Gonna have to try that. It is actually pretty good. Anything with peanut butter is good. Um, we actually got a bag of peanut, of peanut flour. flour that was damaged and we might have like scooped out the stuff that wasn't messed up. So we're keeping you... it for testing for ourselves. So Jesse wants to know, would you consider yourself more dirty keto or cleaner keto? If you ever use those terms. So, um, I heard on a podcast recently, um, a lot of people, uh, he was talking about the difference between people who do total carbs versus people that do net carbs. Uh, which goes along with um, if it fits your macros. Wow, mm -hmm. It's raining outside really loud. I don't think you can hear it on the No, thing. you probably can't hear it on the thing, but it's hitting the it roof. It sounds of the, cool, yeah. though. It sounds like a tin roof. Anyway, um, I take a very scientific and pragmatic approach to keto. Um, I, I definitely do, if it fits your macros, I'm looking at the, at the net carb counts. There are, And that's because that, that's me. I did not have type 2 diabetes. I don't have type 1 diabetes. I had um, metabolic syndrome, and I was on my way to diabetes, but my metabolism actually, is actually pretty good. So, um, oh, you can hear. When we were quiet, you could hear it. Um, anyway, so I, I take the approach of if it fits my macros, if I'm under 20 grams of carbohydrates, then I'm good. And I'm, I'm doing net carbohydrates, specifically... Um, not fiber or low glycemic um, sugar alcohols, which I try not to do very many sugar alcohols just because it gives me really bad gas. But um, there are a lot of people who can't use that approach. And they have to go for total carbs. Yeah. Um, they cannot have peanut butter. Even if it fits their macros, they're like, no, peanut butter is out. Um, and I respect that. Different people are in different places in their keto that journey. Bio individuality. Yeah, and so, and for them, it's a bit more philosophical. If if they see maltodextrin on a, an ingredient, even if we're talking a tenth of a gram or less of maltodextrin, mm -hmm. they'll be like, "Nope, yeah. won't do that." We don't eat that though. 
yeah, we tr we try to make sure that nothing has maltodextrin in it that we eat because it's just starch and it's just why would you eat that? But um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, oh, hey, Emily of Johnny Rockets fame. <gasps> <laughs> they got their box of keto chow today. Chocolate peanut butter is back. Well, chocolate peanut butter has been here for a while. Yeah, we just, just don't the have the samples. samples. Yes. <sighs> that's a that's a bitter pill, but just yeah. a little. Anyway, so yeah, and the mint chocolate. Ooh, yeah, the mint chocolate is good, and the orange mint cream. chocolate's good. I should make that next because I haven't had it. Every uh -huh. time I make it. Haley steals it, and she doesn't like the avocado oil, so I keep making it with avocado oil, and she takes it anyway. <laughs> She's like, I don't like, like the avocado oil, but the mint is so good. Yeah, I should just write, this has poop in it. <laughs> like, you can't drink this. It's got chicken poop. It's been contaminated. <laughs> no taking my keto chow. That's right. Okay, so, yeah. Sorry, that was gross. Well, Paula Schmidt's one that, that uh, can't do peanut butter. So, yeah, I yeah. I, I completely understand. That's it's how well, keto is. we figure we're doing keto now so that we don't have the health problems later. Yeah. Yep. Which is why we're working on our kids to do it, and they eat pretty much all keto foods. Yep, except when they're... Except for <laughs> at school. Yeah, when here at home. choose what they want to eat. Yeah. We want them to have it be their decision, and we want them to look back and say, when I ate with mom and dad, I felt good, and so I'm going to do this. So Ruth said that her niece went to the hospital, and they told her to go take some potassium. She mixed up some keto chow and instantly felt better. Yay! It's because it's got a lot of potassium. It does. And there's it's a reason behind that. If you haven't ever heard, it's because I got keto flu real, real, real bad. bad. So... Lots of potassium and keto chow. And we actually, I'd like to have more sodium in there. You can easily add salt. But you can add salt very easily, and it makes it more palatable for new users. So mm -hmm. if you are a grizzled veteran of keto and keto chow is too sweet for you, please add salt. Add salt. So let's see. Put in some fasting drops. Uh, Anthony thinks cookies and cream came through a little mild. Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty mild. Some people can't even tell the difference between cookies and cream and, and vanilla. vanilla. Other people are like, this is the best thing ever! So. What you should do is take a new <laughs> cookie and squish it and put it in there. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, Paula, Paula can have peanut butter. She's oh. just sad. Sad for people who can't. I oh, am too. Oh, yes, I'm sad about that too. Brian Williamson, the keto evangelist. Oh, he loves peanut butter. He loves peanut butter, but he, it's like he's like, it's a trigger food. I can't. Yeah. He, he says he can't have it oh. because he, he starts eating it and it's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, let's see. Previously. Back on track. Well, it's not back on track. It's just um, somebody asked, do you just eat keto chow dry like trail mix? No. I would not recommend that because you're, it's, it'd be about like trying to eat the spoonful of cinnamon. cinnamon. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be really dry. I do know a guy... Actually, yeah, that's, that's who it is. Steak and Iron. If you're familiar with Steak and Iron on Twitter, um, he got some keto chow, and I was talking to him, and he was eating it straight, like powder. Why? I don't know. He just he liked it. <laughs> so you can do that if you really wanted to, but it's not meant to be done that way. Um, uh, we had a, somebody who had a question about um, if you order over $200, and you're within the 48 contiguous United States, um, you'll see an option for free shipping. It's, and it's free ground shipping. Um, that can take a long time, or it might not take a long time. We actually... It's not like a long time. Yeah, it, well, like it depends on if you're days. in Maine or depends not. Depends on where you are. Yeah. yeah. In relation to Utah, yep. where we live. And there is a map on our site that tells you how long it's going to take. And there is the option that you can just choose priority mail. Um, but we do, when you select that, sometimes it doesn't go ground. Um, if you're really close to Utah, I mean, you got the United States and you're over here. Um, if, if you're in like California and stuff, we'll actually ship it priority mail because it's cheaper than shipping it by UPS ground. So, but you would have gotten it in two days anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, some people asked. Uh, all the, I know you just came out with a bunch of flavors that I love. 
But are you guys working on any new ones at the moment? Uh, yes, specifically savory flavors. Mm -hmm. I should mix up another one tomorrow. Yeah. Because I've got for I've got me, my orange cream. For lunch. Oh, you want it for lunch? Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say I've got my orange cream that was supposed to be lunch today. That anyway. So we are. I am working on um, savory flavors. Uh, the taco soup one was just perfect so from the good. beginning. Um, we've been trying to dial in the tomato basil. Um, that one's been problematic because we're actually going to probably have to use a powdered tomato extract, which is, you don't use very much of it. We're going to be using about four grams of it, but it's 50% carbohydrates by weight just because that's tomatoes. Um, and to get a really good tomato flavor, that's kind of what you have to do. So, but we're not making a grilled cheese sandwich to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Holly, who's watching. Was you can like, make one with Fox Hills bread. That's right. And the, another one we're working on is a uh, beef stew. And all of these, we're not using milk protein on. We're actually using a, mil a beef, beef protein and a beef bone broth protein. Um, so it'll actually be dairy-free. Dairy-free, sweetener-free. Yeah, dairy-free, sweetener-free. I mean, it'll actually check a lot of boxes for a lot of people who have issues with various ingredients of current Kyo Chow, So, If you yeah. like hot soup, that is. So let's see. So, yeah, we are working on those more flavors. We're not really working on any sweet flavors just because we are out of space in our warehouse. Mm -hmm. we got this giant, like, 4,000-square-foot warehouse, and it has big pallet racks, and they're full. So we, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to have to get that taken care of first. So let's see. Um, all the potassium, please. Let's see. Did I miss any? Isn't there a tiny bit of salt in it already? Just add more. Yes, exactly. And my son is having keto chow for breakfast since his braces hurt. So much Aww. nicer when he drinks it. Hungry kids are no fun. Yeah, we have a braces kid and we've done two already. And we always, I always try to make soup, but the braces kid we have now doesn't like soup. Oh yeah. So, but she does like keto. Chow, she does so like keto. Chow. It's okay. And when our twins had their wisdom teeth out, well, one of them was on keto and she was able to have keto chow. Yeah. And this brings up an interesting topic. Is keto chow safe for kids? We, we give it to know. our kids. Legally, we cannot say that it is recommended for children or nursing or pregnant mothers because we haven't done any specific tests on that and you have to do a lot of tests in order to certify it for that but we give it to our kids and it's a whole lot healthier than macaroni and cheese yeah and chicken nuggets which people it's so funny people have no problem feeding their kids mac and cheese every day but you start talking to people about feeding your kids a steak or heavy cream or cheese or all that stuff and they lose their minds which is insane but <laughs> okay whatever so um alice says that most four business days from the east coast to west coast by ups ground yeah so well so if we ship to maine i think it is five business days um which is kind of weird anthony likes the idea of tomato basil you keep putting um, your head out of the screen do i yeah. I like it. Then Mr. Scully comes in focus and I go on oh. focus. Oh, sorry. Here. Uh, let's see. Do you know if Keto Chow ranks as far as histamine content? As far as I know, there's no histamine in it. Um, as far as triggering a histamine response, um, I don't think it does that either. But Unless you have an allergy yeah. to something that's in it. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Johnny Rockets is curious about, the, curious about the, that amazing spicy taco soup. I'm excited for the tomato and basil. We'll send you some test ones, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny, I think we can. Everybody else, sorry. You're going to have to wait. Um, timeline on those, it it just, we got so much stuff going on. But it takes like a year. We shouldn't have even said anything. I know. Well, he always just can't keep his I, mouth it's shut. It's true. It's realistically we're talking maybe January, February at the earliest. If I got it nailed in right now, mm -hmm. uh, it might be December, but <clears throat> probably it'll be right when it's hot in the summer. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just like we tried to get um, eggnog and pumpkin spice and everything like that introduced last 
year for mm, October and November. Yeah, it took forever. It takes forever. And we got them introduced in like July, and people were like, "This will be better in the fall." Well, now it's fall, Yay. so you're, now you're, you can you're like welcome. our stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Holly, yep, there she is, grilled cheese. Winter is coming. Hot soup sounds perfect in the morning months. And the uh, Well, the savory chicken soup does work really well for that. And, mm -hmm. it, and you can use it anywhere in a recipe that calls for like a chicken, cream of chicken, cream soup. Of chicken soup. Yeah. So let's see. Use it as a soup base. Jesse says, I'm helping, actually putting it in order right now. <laughs> <gasps> Jesse, yay, we love you. So what's the best way to make the chicken soup? Um, that was one of the things on here, I think. How do, you, um, how do you mix it up? If you use a blender bottle, you need to be very careful because blender bottles do not let pressure out. And if you shake it up... Make sure you put it right next to your face. <laughs> you actually have to... I'm sorry, away you, from your face. You have to vent it every couple seconds if you're using a blender bottle. Whenever I mix up the savory chicken soup or one of the test savory flavors that I'm doing... And for those, I always use um, I always use a half stick of butter every time. I boil Which is some a water on the fourth of a cup. Is it? Yeah, because a half, a half or a, a stick of butter is a half cup. Oh, if you say so. Right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <There's>, yeah, <laughs> I just figured it out once. Tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out once that a half a stick of butter was exactly how much I needed. And it's a nice, even divisible. Half a stick. Half a stick. So, Karate chop. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is I'll boil water, get it boiling, throw a stick of butter with a blender ball into a hydro flask. So the ball from a blender bottle, uh, an 18-ounce hydro flask. Um, and then I'll put in the powder, dump in the water, put on the lid, shake it up. And with a hydro flask, I only ever have to vent it once, maybe twice. I don't know what it is about hydro flasks, but they work way better for mixing up the savory chicken soup. Plus, there's this fun fact that when you mix up boiling savory chicken soup in a hydro flask, um, like eight hours later, it's still like burning your tongue hot. So, so good. My tongue totally numb last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the tomato basil. So let's see. So wait, wait. I want to say something. Okay, go ahead. I mix it totally different. Oh, you do? Yes. I have you do it. Oh. <laughs> That's true. So the best way to mix the savory chicken soup is it's to ask... have your husband make yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Holly yeah. makes things good, though. <laughs> so I bet she could do it. Alice says it's time to move to a 10,000 square foot warehouse. We're actually looking at ways to optimize where we are because the place that we're at... It's so close. We love it there. You... If you were to throw a rock really hard, you wouldn't even come close. But it's the, it's almost the same time for me to ride my bike versus drive a car. Yeah, because you have to sit at a light. But on your bike, you can go through the neighborhoods. I guess yeah. that's Yeah, but yeah. still, it's really close. It's closer to our house than our kids' schools. Yeah. All of them. Yep. So it's if, if I have to come home and grab something, it's really nice. So moving to somewhere else would... It would stink. Holly would like it if we moved somewhere closer. Holly to needs to move over here. Yeah, but Miriam keeps saying Holly needs to move over here. Eventually, so. she's going to figure it out. <laughs> um, Sarah Schaefer asked, how long does keto chow made it with avocado oil last in the fridge? Six days. <laughs> um, it, Jesse Blair says, loving the Scully Instagram stories. You're going to see more of them. Oh, yeah. We had two hours the other day. It was so fun. My whole neighborhood, the whole street came out to see. We put him on a bike. It was quite the... It was awesome. Yeah. Um, Paula says, I make this with milk instead of whipping cream. If you're not doing a ketogenic diet... Yeah, you can totally do You that. can totally do that. It's going to give you nutrients and vitamins yeah. and minerals. And a lot of people will ask, can you use keto chow not on keto? Well, yeah, well, you can. It's also, if she's going to be having three a day and oh, using milk, she still might be under 20 grams. Uh, it depends what on how that? many calories you're getting from it. Yeah. If, if you use milk and water, probably. Yeah. And also, so in my mind, keto chow is used three times a day. <laughs> and so whenever I talk about what you should use, I'm always extrapolating it out, saying the whole, for the the whole, whole day, day. Yeah. getting... 1,800 or 2,000 calor 2, calories, 200. <laughs> 2, calories a day by using um, whatever. 
if you're just doing one keto chow a day, you probably could get by with milk or the aforementioned half and half. I still would recommend heavy cream and or just on how, less heavy cream. How keto do you need to be? Yeah. And, and that was another question we were going to get into um, as far as, you know, should you use, you know, how, how do you vary the calories? Um, on our website, on the How to Prepare Keto Chow page, there's, if you scroll down past the video of me, past the video of my daughters mixing keto that chow. They're adorable. Yeah. They're way better looking than I am. Um, it's a really long video. It is. Well, it shows everything, how to do it from start to finish. Um, the, 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 the one at the top is really short. It's just, this is how you do it really fast. Done. Done. Yeah. Oh, my nose totally itches. I hit it when my beard hair is getting my nose. That's a mustache. I, you're right. It is my mustache. Um, <laughs> Don't you say that. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> if you talking about preparation and calories, how many calories choo-choo. should you use? All that. Choo choo. Um, on the preparation page, in the detailed instructions, there's a big blue button. Um, if you click on that, you it tell it. calorie calculator yeah. on it. So you type in how many calories you want in a day, and it'll tell you how much cream, oil, oil, oil or both to use to, use to get and a third. And you can choose different measurements. So you can yep. use milliliters, tablespoons, ounces, tablespoons teaspoons, hogshead. hogshead. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a valid measurement of volume. Look it up. If you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> I am very weird. Let's see. So anyway, that's... I would recommend instead of using milk... I mean, if you have milk and that's what you got, then use that. If I would recommend using heavy cream, but just less of it if you're trying to u- get fewer calories. Um, that way you're getting less sugar. Um, or try using avocado oil instead. Uh, but yeah. So you can use the calorie calculator to figure out exactly how much you want. Let's see. Emily, you should mix it with butter and heavy cream. Oh, talking about the Johnny Rockets confirmed. Holy cow. Kerrygold. Confirmed. Isn't really a stick. I've seen Kerrygold in sticks. Oh, that's true. It's a square. Well, no, I've seen it in Do you, regular. Have you seen the, I mean, you've seen it. Have you seen the spreadable Kerrygold that's in a little container? In a little tub? It's still just carry gold. I think that's whipped with water. It's probably water. just whipped, yeah. yeah. So, but it's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Not that you can't spread <clears throat> the other stuff. Yeah, it's just yep. I'm sorry, I interrupted. You. No, you're fine. Carry gold so is fine. not a stick. What's your favorite cut of steak for keto? Prime Bacon. Rib. Oh. <laughs> prime rib by far. It's not a cut of steak, but um, if I can get. Prime rib or brisket, I will definitely go with those. Brisket's so good. I really like the, like the burnt ends. Oh, yeah. But I, I just like all the brisket. But, yeah, I, I used to not like um, prime rib because of all the fat and because it looked like it was raw. And then I woke up and started a ketogenic diet. And, oh, boy. Um, but if I'm at a regular place, I mean, I'll get a prime not a prime rib. A what did I get today? Prime rib. It's not prime rib. You did. You got a prime rib. No, it's not prime rib. Prime rib is the the one that they slow cook. I thought that's what it was. No, it wasn't prime rib. It's the other one. It's a steak. Yeah, it's it a starts steak. With a P. Oh, Deb says the tub has canola in it. Okay, <gasps> don't get that. Don't get that. No. Oh, crap! I didn't even look. What is the name of that cut? Someone's going to say it, and I'm going to feel dumb, and I'm going to be like, yeah, that That thing. one. You know that one meat that has fat on it that's delicious. It's the one that is super marbled and has a lot of fat, and Pastrami. it's one part of a T-bone. Uh, anyway, porterhouse? Ribeye. Ribeye, Rib see? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. You ate it. <laughs> it was, that's probably Lori saying ribeye. <laughs> Ribeye, ribeye. But yes. Hello, Jose. Como estamos esta noche? So, every live, we're going to guess a cut of meat. I'm just yeah. <laughs> pues estamos hablando en castellano ahora, ¿no? No. No? Okay. Speak. Chuta. Okay. English. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Laurie says Did you know that Chris can speak Spanish? I can speak Castilian. Chris can speak Spanish. Also, my mother could, too. Yeah, that's true. She probably still can in heaven. Yeah. I lived in South America for a while. 
is the easiest way to describe it. So. I didn't. <laughs> That's okay. You're fantastic anyway. Thanks. You went, you did it interior design. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can tell. You can tell. Anyway, um, back east, they called ribeye delmonicos. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We, need, we want to try some Wagyu beef. That's true. Um, Harmon's, a local grocer, sells Wagyu. Um, Jose, estamos bien. Um, okay, I, uh, we actually should probably uh, sum this up pretty soon. Sum we're, it up. we're going, we've been going on for 45 minutes. Yeah, but, really? Sorry. Yeah. but we haven't cut out, right? No, Everybody we haven't cut out. Everybody can hear us the whole time, right? Yeah, we haven't gotten any transmission problems. Look, ribeye is the steak version of prime rib. See, you had prime rib. Well, if Steve said so, I believe it. Because <laughs> Steve's awesome. Steve knows things. <laughs> Um, for those that don't know, oh, Dominicano Republico. Re- República Dominicano. Hey, I got that backwards for a second. Well, it was the other yeah. way. So in the, in the old days, when we were doing keto chow, literally right where the camera's pointed at. Um, that before used to we be did, our kitchen. Yeah, that used to be our kitchen. Um, on Saturdays, uh, our friends and family would just come over and... Miss smoking ribs this weekend. Yes, we are. Um, we would just they'd just come over and help make keto chow. I'm so excited for ribs. Yeah, it's gonna be great. We're going camping and there's a smoker up there. <laughs> anyway. I wanna go um, hike. And when we would be making all of the the stuff, we would have bought I would usually go to the to Sam's Club and buy a bunch of steaks and Steve's job was to make steaks. So we would say <laughs> Steve, go, go make, make steak. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd make breakfast, he would make lunch, and he would make dinner, and we, we would all worked, leave the work worked, area and, the and eat, and then go worked, back. Um, worked. Packaging. <laughs> Laurie says we're going to freeze this weekend, except we're not going camping. We have a trailer. We're going it's glamping. called glamping. <laughs> so we'll be, we'll be okay. We wash our hands in faucets. <laughs> We have a shower. Yeah, but you can't really use it because it's... But we have one. We have one. We can use it. We just don't unless we need to. Uh, it, well, it, it uses up water and... But then we get stuff. more water and put it in the tank and it's fine. Plus, the, the tub is full of dead bugs. Gross. We it, vacuum it out. Is. <laughs> We're not disgusting. So, um, okay. Should you use MCT oil? You can. If you want to. Mm, yeah, Exactly. You don't have to. Glamping for the win. Yes. <laughs> um, so MCT oil, when you... Okay, so it's not re- a requirement. Uh, back in the old keto chow, up, uh, well, up to 1.5 days, we actually recommended adding MCT oil. And then we took that away because people have a lot less tummy problems if they don't use MCT oil. MCT is cool because... It's a fat that gets turned right into ketones. So you'll have more ketones in your system. Um, if you are like working out and need additional energy or you are epileptic and need um, therapeutic levels of ketones in your blood, MCT really is awesome. And compared to using a different oil, MCT is still really awesome. But MCT will not make you lose weight any faster any more than taking exogenous ketones will not make you lose weight any faster. Because the idea is you want to use, well, if you're trying to lose weight, different people are doing keto for different things. So let me, if you're trying to lose weight, um, MCT oil is cool, but it won't help you. Because the idea is to use your own stored fat, not fat from outside. And if you are adding ketones whether it be by mct or by exogenous ketones your body has to burn that off before it will start making its own so in a way it's almost like you're ingesting glucose but not really anyway so yeah you don't have to use mct but you can so and i would not recommend using more than a tablespoon per keto chow shake i've done that don't do it it's it's bad it's a way to clean out your system. Yes. Install a bidet first if you're going to do that. 
Um, MCT is good for ketones. Yes. Delicious. <laughs> Dead bug bath. <laughs> organic, organic coconut oil works the same. So coconut oil, just regular coconut oil, has um, uh, has different lengths of carbon in it. Uh, carbon chains in the fats. You've got C8, C10, C12, and a couple of other ones. Um, MCT oil, they've taken out the C12, and they've left either just C8 and C10 or just C8. So that's eight carbon atoms in a string. That's why it's a medium chain, medium chain instead of a long chain. Um, regular coconut oil, it does have a lot of MCTs in it and will boost your ketones, and it's a fantastic fat. Um, Matt of uh, Keto Connect fame, he likes to call saturated fats stable fats because they don't oxidize, whereas monounsaturated and polyunsaturated he calls monounstable and polyunstable because it's an accurate description of what's going on. Um, the saturated fat in coconut oil is very stable, doesn't oxidize, lasts for a long time. It's awesome sauce. The only problem with using it in keto chow is it turns into hard white lumps unless you are doing a hot one. So if you're you, talking about this, the shelf, the what's that? hard one. Yeah, the were... regular coconut oil. So like the organic coconut oil, the stuff that is hard and white at room temperature. Now, if you are Holly and you're making um, chocolate keto chow and heating it up, go ahead and use... Uh, coconut oil. She likes to have it as hot chocolate yep. in the morning. It tastes kind of like hot chocolate. It kind of does. Yeah. Especially with avocado oil because it's like a darker chocolate taste. Yep. So you could use coconut oil for that. I would not recommend using coconut oil with most of the other ones. Um, somebody had a trick for melting coconut oil along with avocado oil and then like it stays liquid but generally speaking you're probably not going to want to use coconut oil in, in keto chow, but you can use it in a ketogenic diet. Come it works high. fantastic. Why is the skeleton in the back? Because it's awesome. Come <laughs> your um, Emily, oh, that's one thing I forgot to point out. This is Ruth. Hold on, she's out of focus. This is our 12 year old. Twin. One of our 12 year olds. Now she's in focus. Okay. Um, Bye. One problem with using MCT oil, like I kind of alluded to, is well, it's technically termed disaster pants. Um, it can be pretty bad. I'm pretty sure you made that. No, up. it's that is. Yo sé, es un placer ser visto en tu país también. ¿Cómo? He said it's a pleasure to be able to see you in my country. Um, Alice Gao only uses eight grams and only in the morning shake. Go so, do a dance with Mr. Skelly. There you go. Everybody can see. Let's you dance see. With him. Um, Dana says hi, Ruth. Who? Um, Dan? Yeah, Dana. Dana. Dana? Sorry. Yes, it probably is Dana. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we're probably getting pretty close to being done, but somebody asked, how long do you have to wait? I'm going to soldier on. How long do you have to wait after mixing up keto chow before you can drink it? So in the old days, it used to be you had to wait at least 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes. And that's because the, the form of selenium that we were using tasted like Flintstones vitamins. I didn't think it tasted like that. Well, but I that's did. okay, because I'm not you. It's all about me. Okay. Um, <laughs> but so you would have to wait that long for it to stop tasting really, really strongly of vitamins. Um, in Keto Chow 2.1, we changed things around a lot. We, uh, we switched the selenium. Um, we switched to milk protein instead of whey protein, so it, it just mixes up better. Um, realistically, you really only have to wait about five minutes after mixing keto chow. And, and even that is just a matter of taste. The, uh, the milk protein takes about five minutes to fully dissolve, and so it's a little it bit green. It thickens up, too. Yeah, and it thickens up. It thickens up even more overnight. Um, but you can overcome that by either using avocado oil instead of heavy cream, which makes it thinner, or just add more water. There you go. Da, da, da. <laughs> so let's see. 12 year olds are great. I teach seven. What does he say? Uh, mm. Somebody teaches him. And the magnesium in 2.1 eliminated disaster pants too. Yes. That's another thing. We yeah, switched from 
magnesium citrate to magnesium malate. Um, it does, it is a lot easier on people's digestive system. So um, I get, it does get a lot thicker overnight. That is true. Some people really like that. Some people don't. It's all a matter of taste. If it's too thick for you, add more water. Yeah, add more water. Um, let's see. Can you do keto chow use in a, if your plan is to do um, one meal a day, OMAD? You can. Yeah. So you could either do keto chow as part of your one meal a day. Um, I've done keto chow with intermittent, well, time-restricted feeding. I don't want Jason Fung to get mad at me. Hmm. Or Ben Bickman. I doubt they watch our videos. I doubt they do, too. Well, I don't know. Ben might have We haven't point. met Jason Fung. We're going no. to meet him. I think he's going to be at Breckenridge next year. Oh, I he, mean, Denver. I yeah, he's, he supposed, yeah, he's yeah. supposed to be at Denver. We're going to meet him. Yeah. We, we, met, listen, yeah. we listen to him all the time. Yeah, he's great. We think we know him. <laughs> We're like best friends. <laughs> Megan Ramos is really awesome. She's super nice. She is super nice. And so is Angel. And Although I always call him Angel. And he doesn't like it. I don't think he likes it. And I'm trying to get it over in my head. It's just, I, I have a really hard time. Um, anyway, let's see. Time-restricted feeding. So I've done um, instances of the past where I just haven't eaten until about three o'clock and then I drank a keto chow and then I waited an hour drank another keto yeah. chow and I waited an hour and drank another one and Miriam is lucky if I she would can die do- <laughs> if I did that and she's like she stomach can- would explode <laughs> yep but I, I don't know I've been doing it long enough that it's not a problem for me and it, it works out you're fine Ruth just walk around normal just say hi <laughs> Because everybody's going to be waiting really for you. It's really funny that we only have two of the kids yeah, here at this point. Um, anyway, so you can do um, you can do one meal a day. So, yeah. You could have a big old plate of bacon and eggs and then drink a keto chow next to it. You could. So, and add for those that your, are... Add up your calories and make sure you're all right. Yep. And for those that are unfamiliar with time-restricted feeding, more commonly referred to as intermittent fasting, although that's not the proper term, but whatever. Um, it's where you basically just don't eat breakfast usually. You just skip one or two of your meals in a day, and that gives your body more time where you don't have insulin. Mm-hmm. And that is fantastic. It's good for you. It's yeah. really good for you. It's what our ancestors used to do. You'd wake up in the morning. It helps you empty the refrigerator. Yeah. If you, if you heard <laughs> Megan Ramos' talk at Keto yeah. Fest, helps you empty the refrigerator before you put something in. Yep. And uh, um, let's see. Huh. There's, so what's good with intermittent fasting then? It's just, it's, it's really nice to um, give yourself a break and, yeah, allow your, your insulin to go down. Um, it makes my tummy feel good. Too. Yeah. Deb has, she's doing 18-8. Which is perfect. So that's where you don't eat for 18 hours, and then you have an eight-hour window where you eat, and then you don't eat anymore. And a lot you're of times... you eating constantly during the eight-hour window. You yeah, just it's just eat like, your meals during that eight-hour yeah, window. Yeah, usually two of them or something like that. And it's, it's just, it's a really cool way to break through a stall. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's really good. Works really and good. And Deb says it creates autophagy or autophagy. I've never been able to figure out how to pronounce that right. That's where your old cells get broken down. And basically your body goes around and says, we need some protein. Where are we going to get that well, from? Well, where are we going to get that from? Well, we lost all this weight. Let's break down all that connective tissue and use that to build these muscles instead of breaking down our, our muscles. And autophagy is just really cool. Um, it, and you really get into autophagy really well, um, according to Megan Ramos, after 36, 36 hour hours. 36-hour fast. Uh, beyond 36 hours, you start uh, you get diminishing returns. So she recommends not going more than about a 36-hour fast because you can do those frequently. Whereas if you do like a seven-day fast, it's like... Uh, you have to recover. Kind yeah, of. <laughs> that's like once a I'm quarter. I'm going to do a 36-hour fast sometime. 36 or 72? 
36. Oh. Well, we said 36. It's 72. Yeah. We said the wrong no, answer. No, 36 is where autophagy really starts to kick in. No, she said 72. Is it? Oh, no. I have to look it Dang up. Dang it. <laughs> well, Jess, Jess says that the uh, fasting drops have really helped with her leg cramps. Yay! Miriam likes to sometimes just <laughs> squirt it straight. Like, <laughs> I really have bad cramps. I just got to get it now. Yep. I don't like the way it tastes. Like, I don't... Ooh. Salty. So Jesse wants to know, do you guys work out? So you don't have to work out. Wor you work do out for work fun. Out? <laughs> do you work out? <laughs> do um, you work out? look like we work out? <laughs> um, my preferred way of working out is lifting weights. Um, it's been a while since I've been able to do that. My knee started working. We did this 30-mile. It, it stopped hurting. working. My knee started hurting. We did this 30-mile <laughs> hike over the summer, and... I actually, apparently my patella got skewed, and so it's been rubbing against one of my it took bones. took a time out. Yeah, so I'm, I got this brace on my knee, and it actually feels a lot better. So I think I might be able to start doing squats again. So that's Which my good, preferred way. because I really need to, because yeah. my legs are sad. So you work I out I like lifting, fun. too. Yep. And a lot of people... Don't, we don't work out, though. Yeah. We need to. But a lot of people recommend working um, lifting weights as one of the best things you can do for... Um, for losing weight and just improving it's just, everything. It's just so. so cool to tone your body. It's, you don't even have to like go up and up and up all the time in weights. Just doing a little bit here and there still helps tone your body. So <laughs> it's cool. I, so I like it. Anthony says, yes, peaks at 36 hours. Thank you, Anthony. He says, IDF gives you three 36-hour fasts a week. There you go. That, that's what Megan was talking about during the Fasting Friday. I don't know why I got confused. Yeah. I was sure that was it. 36. Yeah, so autophagy peaks at 36 hours. They get the most results from 36 hours, but they see diminishing returns yeah. totally after 72 hours. So they never, okay, they never right. recommend longer than a three-day fast. So I've done two 24-hour um, fasts a week, mm -hmm. and it really helped. Yeah. Like me kind of kick things, get things moving, and, and uh, I started losing weight again, and it was great. And the difference between a 24-hour fast is you'd, you'd eat dinner, and then you'd eat dinner the next day. Um, with a 36-hour fast, you eat dinner, you don't eat anything for a day, and then you eat breakfast on the third day. So, yeah. Yes. Um, Alice says yoga. Oh, yoga And Deb great. says she does pirates. I'm sorry, Pilates. <laughs> Actually, I do Pilates. <laughs> Pilates lot. of the Caribbean. <laughs> I have this one Pilates video that I've been doing for years, and I love it. Yeah. I pretty much have it memorized. I can quote the entire yeah, thing. Yeah, he can. Lengthen the legs as you go, and down again. Up, straight, yeah. and, and down, down again. <laughs> anyway, so um, can you use olive oil? We already said that. How many calories do you do per scoop? We already talked about that. Do you prefer the entire week at once? We got all the questions done. We're right at an hour, so. <laughs> so if you guys have any other questions for next week, throw them our way. Yep. We can be prepared with answers. Yep. Or just hop on and ask questions like, like you were. And here. we'll try not to have weird fuzziness. Yep. Anthony says, or if you like me, I end up not eating breakfast. So I end up with 40-ish hour, hours. Which is great. That's great. So Seriously, great. our bodies were not designed to be thing? eating constantly Hi. they were designed to go out yeah. yeah you need a haircut i got a haircut today yeah it was, it was what nice. a nice wife you have i know um our bodies were designed to go for extended periods of time kill a mastodon eat it with mastodon. our tribe yeah mastodon or a big saber-toothed tiger or, you know whatever a large animal we were and then eat it and then maybe go two or three days without eating again because you have to go hunting again. That's, that's the way our bodies are designed. We're not designed to get stuff out of the fridge, get stuff out of the fridge, get stuff out of the fridge. You didn't even say so, hi. You just yeah. stuck your face in there. You have to say anyway, hi. Anyway, Alice says thanks for the live session. I think, yeah, we're, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we're done. So thanks, everybody. And Thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. If I can, where is it? You can find the button. Maybe.